In this episode of the Cisco Learning Network podcast, we're going to be talking about the changes to the Cisco certification program. With us today is Yusuf Bahaji, Senior Manager of Global Certifications at Cisco. Yusuf is a principal leader in the reorganization and strategy of the new certification and training portfolio. Cisco Learning Network Community Manager Brett Lovin sat down with Yusuf for a high-level discussion of the changes to the Cisco certification portfolio. Let's listen in to part one of two. Here's Brett. Hey, welcome everybody to a podcast, another podcast for learning at Cisco. Uh, this is exciting, exciting day for me to get a chance to, to interview Yusuf Baji here in just a moment. My name is Brett Lovins, Community Manager on the Cisco Learning Network, and we're putting this podcast out there for folks that have discovered there's changes to the Cisco certification program. And we wanted to bring on one of our top dogs here with Yusuf to talk it over with us. Yusuf, welcome. And if you wouldn't mind just taking a moment and telling the audience who you are, a little bit about yourself and, and your role here with the certification program. All right. Thank you, Brad, and thank you for having me. So first of all, my name is Yusuf Baiji. I'm the senior manager for the global certifications team. My team is primarily responsible for the design and development as well as the delivery of the certification program across Cisco. So kind of we manage all programs from associate level, professional level, expert level, so all sorts of exams on the portfolio. So I think it's very exciting for me too, like you said, Brett, for this is a time when we have been waiting for to share some very critical, some very important messaging. So thank you for having me. Over the past several years, Cisco has developed a new networking portfolio featuring intent-based networking, multi-domain solutions, programmability, and APIs. This fundamentally changes the role networks play in business and how networking is done. To fully leverage the capabilities of the new network, networking and software skills are key. So Cisco is taking learning to the next level in line with this technology shift, adding new certifications for software development and evolving its traditional certification program for network infrastructure engineers. All new Cisco DevNet Certified Associate, Cisco DevNet Certified Specialist, and Cisco DevNet Certified Professional certifications provide software skills for network engineers and software developers who work with Cisco technologies. The evolved Cisco certification program introduces CCNA, Cisco Certified Specialist, CCNP and CCIE certifications that maintain the high quality standards known to the industry, yet have been streamlined based on market demands and learner preferences. The program is designed for agility, value, and leadership. It lets people choose the skills they want to develop and encourages lifelong learning. Well, let's get to the heart of it. What is changing for this new portfolio? All right, so that's that's a million dollar question, right? right. <laughs> so I guess before before I go into the what is changing, I guess the bigger question is why are we changing? Why was there a need to change the portfolio and the certification framework and stuff? So I guess one one very common theme that we have all observed as technocrats, as people in the industry, is it's a fast growth, uh, you know, technology change happening around us. I mean, we are all witnessing that experiencing this change of technology explosion and that has resulted in the job role expectations and demand for new skills because remember one thing that we always say to our customer that the certification program aligns or or kind of the two fundamental pillars that we align to in our thought process is relevancy and integrity. So integrity is something to protect the, you know, the, the security of the exam and stuff. So I'm not talking too much about that. My main point is about relevancy, that when you design a product, you make sure that it is aligned to the customer and they, they want to buy it, right? I mean, if you go to the market, you want to purchase something, why do you buy it? You, you align to it, it is relevant to you. So what's happening right now in the industry is technology is changing very fast. And what was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, when I started my career 30 years ago, the expectation from me as a network engineer was different, right? And today when technology is changing, job roles are changing too, they are evolving. There are different expectations from the hiring manager, different expectations from your customer, different expectations from your peers. So all that has kind of led to 
for us to rethink the framework for certification program that how we used to serve our customers and partners in the community. And our kind of thought was to make sure that this new program is agile, is simple, is flexible, and we provide choices because that's something and in the heart of this change that you will notice when I kind of walk through some examples that we are providing a lot of flexibility and choices. So that's kind of the why part that why are we changing? And I guess it's very intuitive or common, but I wanted to set that stage that there was a need, a desire to change the program because of the industry expectation. So kind of now, I guess, going back into the what, what is changing? So I think in one liner, our entire portfolio, the certification portfolio that people are uh, aware of, the CCNA, the CCNP, the CCA, that's changing. So one thing one thing is important for, for our customers to understand is that the framework is intact. It's not changing from that original framework that people are so familiar with, that we have the hierarchical certification model, we have the associate level program, which is for the beginner, the entry level, then we have the professional level program, the CCNPs, and then we have the expert level program, the CCA. So that that hierarchy model is not changing. But what is changing is how we are delivering it, how we are packaging it, how we are going to put the policies and rules to obtain that level of certification. Yeah, that's great. So I've had a chance to review the new portfolio fairly extensively, and and I've been through a few uh, certification refreshes in in the past. We're hopefully, Yusuf, going to have the opportunity to have more podcasts with you because I know we're going to have specific folks asking about, you know, how is it changing for each one of those hierarchies, right? CCNA, CCNP, CCIE. This is our little teaser to say that we are planning to do more podcasts to speak to each one of those parts very soon. With that said, Yusuf, when we say what is changing, without delving, you know, deeply into each one of those those tracks, um, maybe you could speak to a, a few bullet points or a few ideas about the overall program for all of the tracks. Absolutely. So what, what I think I, I can do to share with the community is kind of summarizing the important changes or the key changes that is happening across the portfolio. So first thing is we are restructuring our entire portfolio from left to right, from associate to expert from training programs and training curriculums to our certification exams, all of that is changing. So people have to really absorb and understand that this is not like one nerd knob change someplace. There is a holistic change in the program. And it will take time for people to absorb and understand the change. So that's why we may need multiple podcasts or multiple ways to educate our customers what are the different changes. So in in no particular preference or order, I'm going to kind of explain a few important uh, key changes, right? So first of all, we are introducing uh, the incremental recognition. That that is important because what we observed in the past is and, and in today's industry is that when you pursue a journey, certification journey, it takes time. Like, for example, if you're pursuing CCNA, it may take you six months, it may take you two months. If you're pursuing CCNP, it may take you one year or or one month, depending on how quickly you're learning and preparing. For CCIE, it takes up to two years or three years for people. So what we realized is that there was no reward mechanism built into the journey as you go. So now what we are doing is we are providing that instant recognition for as you go. For example, in the CCNP program, CCNP certification, let's say today you're pursuing CCNP routing and switching or CCNP security, you may end up taking anywhere between three to four exams. So when you pass one exam, do you get anything? No, you know, you just get a score report and say, yeah, you passed exam number one, X, Y, Z, then you pursue your second exam, and then you pursue your third exam. At the completion of the entire journey, then you get something called CCNP blah, like CCNP security or CCNP data center. But what we have done now in this new framework is we are going to provide at every level some sort of recognition. So when you pass the first exam of any journey, whether you are taking CCNP or CCIE, you will always get some sort of recognition, a certification badge that you can showcase. You can use it in social media, you can use it in your resume, and that allows 
for you to kind of show to, uh, let's say, whatever the purpose was, whether it was for your project or your company or your industry or whatever, that, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of working towards it and I've achieved this status. So that's very important change coming up. And, and that, there, are, there is more detail. This is like a very summarized version I just explained. So please, you know, look out for more information. What do I mean by introducing this incremental recognition as you go? The second change uh, is around the CCNA. So as you all know, today we have almost 10 or 11 flavors of CCNA programs. So we have CCNA route switch, CCNA security, CCNA data center, and so on, so on. The biggest change is happening in the CCNA is we are collapsing all of that and the new program is going to be a single CCNA product, one CCNA, single CCNA. I don't want to call it a unified CCNA or merged CCNA because it is not. It is not that we have taken 10 different technologies like routing, switching, data center, collaboration, security, service provider, IoT, cyber. No, we have not taken all of that <laughs> collapse into a single one because then it defeats the purpose. What we have done is we have rethought the whole paradigm of what is the CCNA targeting? What community is it targeting? What target audience? So the refocus is to emphasize on the common fundamental IT skills. And, and basically it focuses on things like basic IP fundamental, network access, including infrastructure, both wired and wireless fundamental. IP connectivity, a uh, little bit on automation and security. So it's a new package CCNA that is going to focus on someone who is a junior person uh, starting a career in networking and they want to kind of, you know, build their career in, in this industry. So we are removing all those flavors and we are saying this is the foundation program for networking. If you are going to start networking as your career, what are the nuts and bolts that you need to be aware of. And then at the professional level, you kind of start branching out and say, okay, now that you are CCNA and you want to kind of specialize in some sort of technology, let's say now you want to be a security person or a data center guy or a collaboration person, then at the CCNP level, we are going to continue that branching concept that there will be flavors at the CCNP level and at the CCI level. So we're removing that flavor at the CCNA level and making it one product. The other main important factor is that we are removing prerequisite. If you remember in the past, if you wanted to pursue CCNP, the prerequisite was CCNA. We are removing that because we believe that a person needs to get the flexibility. Like I said, the whole program fundamental is to provide flexibility and choices. So we want to put it in your hands that where are you in your journey? Where are you in your career? Like, are you a professional already working in the industry for five years or so? Then we don't want to, you to take a reverse gear and go back and take your CCNA because it's too trivial for you. You can start your journey at the CCNP level. Similarly, some people who are more experienced in the industry, they start their journey at the CCIE level. We don't make them take the CCNP as a prerequisite. So similarly, across all our programs, we are removing that prerequisite policy. The other thing at the CCNP level is now we are changing entirely a flexible granular uh, model where we are going to provide choices. And CCNP is going to be very, very flexible now. CCNA was the opposite, right? I mean, there is no, I mean, there is something that is flexible on one program, but not the other. So CCNA, we said, well, we've changed all those flavors and kind of created this new single product called CCNA. But CCNP will continue to have flavors, but we are aligning the CCNP into the five Cisco major architectures. So the first one is enterprise, service provider, collaboration, data center, and security. These will be the five flavors or five CCNP brands. The new architecture of the CCNP will be that you have to take two exams, two only. The first exam, we call it technology core exam. The technology core exam is the foundation of that particular technology, whether you're pursuing enterprise, whether you're pursuing security or collaboration. So there will be a technology core exam for security that's your first exam you take the second exam is where you have plenty of choices so depending on 
what is your uh, um, job requirement? What is your what is your project that you're working on, or what is the technology that you're very good at? Let's say you are only working on uh, FTD uh, firewall, or you're only working on VPNs. Then you only take that particular niche technology as your second exam. You don't need to take all of the technologies because that was one of the very important feedback in the past many years that you know why are you making me do all sorts of these things when it is not relevant for me i don't do this on my job right so that's now the change that we are saying that the relevancy part that we are going to make you do things that are relevant for you so the first exam is the common exam that every engineer needs to take as a foundation exam or as a core exam for that particular technology, whether it's enterprise or service part or collaboration. And the second exam is where you get the choices and we'll give you a pool of choices. So there'll be four or five or six different exams to choose from and you only need to take one. So one plus one, two exams will give you the CCNP recognition. But remember, I also mentioned earlier about the incremental recognition or as you go recognition or kind of instant reward. So what happens in this new model is that when you take your first exam, number one, which is technology core, you'll get a Cisco certified specialist for it. So you can showcase that, yeah, you know, I'm halfway through, these are my credentials, this is what the exam covered, these are the topics that I'm master of. Then the second exam, whichever you take, right? For example, if you are in data center, you can take ACI. If you're in enterprise, you can take either wireless or either routing or either design. Remember, there is no sequential. You can take the exam in any order. You can take the exam number two first, or you can take exam number one first. You can go either way. But when you fulfill both requirements, then you get the CCNP badge or the certification for that, CCNP whatever. And then the last one is, of course, the CCIE brand, right? CCIE also, I think there is a big change and a very positive change coming up in the CCIE product. We've completely elevated the brand and repositioned it to focus on the entire life cycle, entire life cycle of the network. So if you remember previously, the CCIE brand was primarily focused on the post sales, meaning implementing the solution deploying the technology, configuring the technology. It was not very much focusing on the design. Design, there was a different product, a different brand, and people used to kind of associate with the CCDE brand. But what we are doing now with the CCA program is we are going to test in the eight-hour practical lab exam the complete life cycle from planning, designing, deploying, operating and optimizing the technology. So it's a complete life cycle of the network from start to finish. So if I take an example of, let's say, CCIE Enterprise, it will focus on everything from how you plan your network, your routing planning or layer two switch plan or the campus network or your, how your BGP network will look like. So everything from the planning and design to actually deploying and implementing it. And not to forget, automation is a big piece of the change because now network programmability and automation is a critical skill that every engineer needs to know. And CCIE also is going to focus on these these pieces. And finally, the key change, we are enhancing our recertification program. So as you're all aware, we have the continuing education program which is the, an alternative way to recertify. So there is a way to recertify using the exam. You, you take an exam for recertification, and then you can take the continuing education, which is a combination of activities, like you can take trainings, you can attend Cisco Live, you can uh, contribute to the authoring of the exam, and you collect X number of continuing education credit to recertify. So what we are doing now is we are taking it to the next level and the continuing education program will be available across all of our certifications. So whether you're pursuing CCNA, CCNP, CCIE, or even our specialist programs, continuing education will be available as an alternate choice to do recertification. So please look out for those details because there is a lot of details on the how. How will it work? How many credits do you need? I don't want to kind of go too much into detail right now, but there is a change 
in that paradigm as well, the recertification and continuing education. So I hope that was kind of a, a very high level summary, but I uh, hope that helps. Oh, it definitely does. To use this point, you know, we're trying to come to you on a podcast. So if you're on a train right now or you're, you know, listening on your phone on a bicycle ride, you know, we're here to, to give you this high level as an audio. But of course, we want you to come to the Cisco Learning Network where we're going to have all this information and pictures and, and everything else. And, you know, your peers will be there. Cisco will be there. So we, we've got a lot for you to, to come and consume and learn more about all the stuff that Yusuf's been talking about. One of the ones that we see on the Cisco Learning Network a lot, Yusuf, this time, you know, when we do a, a, any kind of a change to a certification, of course, this being the big one, for those that are in the middle, right, they've, let's say yeah. they're a CCNP and they've got, you know, one of the exams under their belt and they're moving forward, give us the dates that these things are going to change and, and, and let's also get some advice from you on how you'd recommend a, a candidate either continue forward and finishing out their uh, existing certification or waiting? Why don't you speak to that a little bit? Absolutely. I think that's a, that's a great question and very important one because whenever we introduce a change in a certification program, people are in between the journey, right? They are in flight, what I call like some people are already certified and some people are still pursuing it. So one thing I want to assure you that we have carefully thought all of the different scenarios and situations that what if a person is here, what if a person is there. And, and I can assure you that we will take care of our community every step of the way. So the first most important thing from a timing perspective is you have plenty of time. Everything new that is going to roll out in certification exams is going to go live on February 24, 2020. During that time, we will provide all sorts of training for you to prepare. Of course, the current training programs and learning choices are available. Plus, all the new trainings and new curriculums will also be available from now till February. So what we are doing is we are going to release the training programs before the exams go live, because obviously you need content to prepare before the new exam hit the road. So. Please continue to look out for all the different learning content that is going to be made available for you. And there'll be lots of resources on our CLN, Cisco Learning Network, for each technology track, whether you're pursuing CCNA or CCNP or CCIE, there'll be lots of choices. And then I also want to speak a little bit about the migration path. So like I said, the program structure is changing. The framework is changing. Today, let's say, some program is a two exam model or a three exam model or a four exam model. Tomorrow in the new structure, it is going to change differently. Like I said, at the CCNP level, it's a two exam model. For the CCNA, it's one single exam, period. One single exam. So there are different ways to kind of, you know, move you from the current structure to the new structure. So there will be a transition there will be a migration and you will have plenty of time to complete your current journey and we will make sure that you have a new home in the new framework. So there is definitely that part also in terms of migration and transitioning to the new framework. So Yusuf, one of the other exciting things that's happening, you know, with software being such an integral part of Cisco's direction and, you know, on CLN, we've been doing webinars with the DevNet team for a couple of years now. So we've been trying to provide that information. And of course, Software Defined Networking showed up in the last CCNA blueprint for routing and switching. If you don't mind, Yusuf, if you wouldn't mind talking a little bit about adding DevNet into the official Cisco certification program, how is that working? Absolutely, Brad. This is a very critical, very key uh, component of the Evolution program. Like you said, you know, software is a big part of the industry right now. Automation and programmability is key and using APIs and all sorts of automation. And it's a very integral change in our program. So what I will say is I'll step back a little and explain this in two ways. First is there is two different type of target audience. One is our network engineers, so people who are in the profession of networking, and then we have people who are in the profession of software developers, so application developers, software developer. so that's a different community. And then there is a balance or a bridge in between that some people are kind of towards the left and some towards the right. 
So what we have done is we have evolved the program for both communities, right? So our CCNA, CCNP, CCA, of course, I mentioned earlier that we have software automation embedded. We will have specific concentrations or modules or choices within the CCNP focused on the automation and software programmability, as well as at the CCI level, I said it's embedded, baked into the eight-hour lab, as well as at the CCNA level. But what is exciting is now we are introducing a brand new portfolio called DevNet certification. So it is going to mimic the same hierarchical model as our traditional CCXX program. So we'll have what we call DevNet associate program and a DevNet professional program. Same style, same hierarchy, same policy, same structure, same rules. DevNet associate will be a single exam similar to how we have CCNA in our network engineering portfolio. DevNet professional will have two exam model, which is similar to our CCNP structure. So you'll have the first exam, which is the DevNet core exam, which is compulsory mandatory for any everyone. And then the second exam on the DevNet will be DevNet concentration, which is the choices, like I said, in the CCNP also that there will be plenty of choices. So even in the DevNet concentration, there will be a pool of concentration for your second exam, exam number two. And you can have a DevOps concentration, you can have IoT concentration, or you can have, there will be many options available. We'll gradually build the portfolio. There'll be two, three, four, and we'll keep building on it. So eventually also we'll, we're also planning for a DevNet expert program, but that's to be determined in the future. But this is a very exciting new program that you should look out for. It is primarily targeted to the software community, people who are in the application developers and who are in the industry of software and programmability, and they want to kind of work, work in the networking business. So definitely, please keep a look out for those DevNet evolution. Yeah, that's an exciting addition. You know, we're, we've been talking about doing more podcasts with you, so um, uh, this if we can go on and on. This is this is an exciting time for Cisco certifications, folks. We hope you'll uh, consume some of the other podcasts that we'll be having up uh, coming up um, around Cisco certifications. Uh, Yusuf, thanks a ton for your time today. Thank you so much for having me. And one last note is for more information, please make sure you go visit uh, either the Cisco Learning Network or we have this new landing page or a new cisco.com page. So it will be showing on your screen, cisco.com forward slash go forward slash next level, one word. So please visit this website and CLN for all additional information. And like Brad said, there will be more podcasts for each individual section of the certification program. That's it for part one. In part two, Yusuf will get more into the specifics behind what's changing and why in each level of certification, starting with associate certifications. To learn more about the new certification and training portfolio, please visit the Cisco Learning Network, where you will find more resources explaining the changes and a community network ready to support you and answer your questions. We plan to talk with Yusuf more in future episodes, so please subscribe to our podcast so you'll know when they become available. And if you could take a minute to leave us a review on iTunes, we'd appreciate it. Thanks for listening. <laughs>